hello happy friday welcome back to the channel i hope that you're doing good i have a really fat q a for you today so i'm really excited because it has been a while since i've done something like this hopping right into the art category number one what has inspired you lately i've started reading again for fun and reading fiction definitely inspires me it literally makes me see the world through a different lens and maybe it's because i innately enjoy poetry so whenever i'm like on social media or like absorbing other pieces of writing it just kind of inspires me to feel more creative and more i want to say like whimsical the way i see the world and i can like change my perspective i don't know if anybody else can relate to that when you're reading fiction but that has inspired me as well as nature and exploring new cities whenever i see landscapes i just want to put it down on canvas so a goal moving forward is finding the time and dedicating uh, more energy into my paint practice all right thoughts on ai art well, I think my thoughts are twofold. One, I am not very interested in digital art to begin with. It is very impressive. I have seen a lot of the AI generated art and it is really, very really impressive. Um, but I do see why a lot of artists uh, are against that because it can plagiarize and rip off of like people's originality or like things that they have spent their lives like carving into stories and then if you rip it off just for like the aesthetics um, to me that is hollowing out the essence of why art matters because it's expression and it's all about stories so for me like the most important part of knowing or like really understanding art is the person behind it and their story so when it's just like generated it's not really it's not about stories anymore that's why I'm not really like that interested at all any painting tutorials and will you revive the piper blue channel so i did this hobby channel with my sister i want to say like four years ago and it was fun for a while but it was also when she was fresh out of college and wanting like a part-time job and now i just don't see that happening because this channel this channel of mine is now kind of like becoming a smaller and small, smaller part of my life while I am trying to figure out how I want to direct my career and like maybe spend more time and energy into making art and like shop related things and maybe even commercial work. So I don't really foresee myself like expanding into more of YouTube and if anything I might kind of like bring it back and introduce more art back into this channel and like retire that one because I have been thinking about discontinuing my Piper Blue art account as well just because I don't have the energy to run that Do you keep a sketchbook? So I don't and I think that is uh, not to shame myself but I really feel like I should and I want to because it keeps you constantly be like thinking or exercising your creative muscle if not literally exercising your like muscle to sketch something and i experienced artist blocks which is why i don't keep a sketchbook and that's definitely not a reason to not do it i'm like literally afraid to take up space or i'll continue maybe like two three days and then realize oh this is really disappointing i don't like how my sketchbook's turning out and then i would abandon it and like three months later pick up in a new sketchbook and i, I would say this one's gonna be different it's gonna be amazing it's gonna be perfect and then now i have like four incomplete sketchbooks however i have been journaling really consistently and i'm about to finish like my second journal for the first time actually so I kind of see parallels in the two so i'm like okay if i can find a way to find comfort in sketchbook um, practice rather than like pressure um then i think i will keep it up and i think i will gain a lot from it as an artist and as a person number five what would you do when you don't feel good enough advice on posting on social media and dealing with imposter syndrome so i think when it comes to sharing your art, social media is really exciting but it's really really hard to not care about negative comments but see it as 
secondary to your primary intention of making art and wanting to share maybe make someone's day better so even if you don't get the results that you desire um, if you make it all about the external validation or like the result of posting then it can get you really addicted to that feedback loop so then the intention of making art is going to be about that feedback loop or like the high of getting the likes or good comments rather than the enjoyment of making something and wanting to share it. So I feel like those are kind of closely tied or the line is really blurry. It's hard for me to not care or not want that validation too. I think as humans, it's just, it's just a part of us and that's why social media app developers like, capitalize on our need to do that and make social media really addicting so that they can profit. Um, but just remember like, it's okay to care about what other people think. It's just more important that you like what you're doing and that you care so that if you do get a bad comment or you don't get the results that you desire when you post or you feel like you're an imposter, um, try to stay true to yourself and know that you're doing this for yourself. And that's something I'm trying to work on still, you know? Now, number six, will you consider making and selling textile pieces in the future? So definitely, it's just a matter of like calming down and like doing it. There's so many things that I want to do that I haven't done and it's like, okay, baby steps. But I really miss still screen printing. I miss pattern making. I miss um, like, I've been thinking about designing knit throws and just things like that. So it's on my mind. Tips for artists without any formal training. I think my tip would be to make your practice really, really regular. Just like anything, like if you're picking up a sport and trying to refine a skill or learning an instrument, it's really about the hours and reps that you put in. So it's the same with art. It's like, don't expect inspiration to strike and to be able to produce something you're really happy with on the first try. It's kind of illogical if you think about it. So if you make instead 100, and you yield maybe one to two results that you're happy with, then amazing. And then maybe over time, if you make 50, you're gonna yield like 10. So the success rate will slowly go up as you uh, just have more experience. And nowadays with the internet, there's so many resources like on YouTube or you can even pay or um, enlist and like be a patron on Patreon for a lot of different artists. They give you so many valuable tips and you can see their process and stuff like that. So that would be my first tip if you don't have formal training. Repeat, 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 repeat. Just do it again, again, again. Do it so much. Like it's easy to look at me and think like it's just talent or something like that. But I definitely had the days where I did not. I struggled very, very much, but I started training seriously when I was eight. And it was like, at the time, because my my home situation was really unstable. So going to art studio was like, kind of something that can take my mind off. And um, also like my mom would get like some free time because she was a single mom, because she like sent us to this art studio. So it's been decades for me. Uh, it didn't start for me like just like in high school or college. And I have a painting that I hang up in the stairwell of my apartment. If you see in my vlogs, it's of like this plant. I always forget the name of this plant. It starts with a P. And that's my first oil painting ever. So I really love seeing that painting every single day I wake up because it reminds me of my journey and all of the effort I put into getting to where I am today. Next question, what do you work as and how do you support yourself financially? So I work as like, I call myself a self-employed artist, but I also am a content creator. So I support myself financially primarily through, if I make videos, then I will get sponsorships that will pay. Um, AdSense generates some, but with my current view, like, uh, what do you call it? Like view, like average views, it's not a living wage just for anyone that's curious. So it requires me to try to get brand deals, and then I have my online shop, so making videos, like I think you'll see a lot of artists with businesses will make videos to spread their work through uh, like word of mouth, but on the internet to be like, hi, like here's what, I, what, what I'm about and that would bring traffic into my online store. And then I'm trying to do more commissions, so for my artwork, but that's like kind of just like a tiny sprout, like a bud. So it's beginning. So those are all the things I try to do. And then I'm thinking about starting Patreon again because this time I want to do it 
in a sustainable way for the right reasons and I won't run myself into the ground and burn out like last time. So those are all things I'm considering. Um, and like you have to juggle and have those multiple streams of revenue. What are your current favorite artists or who? Okay, so the first people that come to mind for a couple of years now, my favorite illustrator has been Joey Yu. She is a London-based illustrator and she makes very colorful, sketchy scenes of, I think like everyday life, like a lot of people her like her line work interprets people in a very expressive way that brings me a lot of delight um next a painter that i really love is michelle morin i found her on instagram and i think right now her collection is like series of floral bouquet paintings i often see that like she paints oil on wood panel her style of painting um, it's really inspiring to me because it's kind of like the style that I enjoy where you paint with a load of brush You can see the strokes quite clearly and her color palettes are also so soothing to me um, different kinds of green It's very interesting to study how she composes her work as well and Makes me really want to try painting on wood panel, which I can't believe I still haven't done to this day next is Ben Steyer uh, primarily a painter I believe I saw his work on Instagram and I feel like he creates jaw-dropping compositions and is really innovative with his work. I'm not really sure the main inspiration other than like the fact that I feel like there's a heavy like graphic design influence and it's so cool to see that um, like come into his super intricate painting work and also makes me like think about how I could kind of like break the mold when it comes to paintings and have really fun compositions that that's not just like the canvas is like a photograph it could be many things it can be split up almost like a collage and lastly charlotte may she is an acrylic painter makes a lot of landscapes with very solid chunks of color and it's just so bubbly and joyful that i started painting in acrylic i think like sometime last year just seeing her acrylic work and I'm, I'm trying to get better at it. I don't use any mediums at the moment. So it's a really big struggle for me to not have the acrylic paint dry on me. Um, but those are the top four that came to my mind. The last question is, favorite ceramic piece that you've made yet? I'm going to grab it for you right now. The first hand-built piece that I made, and to this day is probably my favorite, most precious work, is Prairie in a Bowl. I use her as a candy dish, and when friends come over, they pick caramels out of it, or they'll even leave little snacks that they bring back from like their travels for me. And then secondly, this one is probably like made like almost a year later. I call this like the home mug. Inside it says home is a feeling, and outside. The process of this underglaze was very much like how I would approach a painting. I had a whole palette of like five, six colors and it's kind of challenging work with underpaint because, or sorry, not underpaint, underglaze because it dries very, very pale. So it's very difficult to know what's going to happen unless you're like constantly trying. It's like a mixture of guesswork, basically working with different values and the result is so cute this is bambi sleeping and prairie is standing here and they make me feel like home so that's why this mug means a lot to me and i'm finally starting to create another one after a long time um, so maybe in the future i can create like a collection of more painterly mugs but it is it is quite it's harder than it looks because we're so used to like graphics just being printed onto a cup but it's like this is from scratch so that's why I love it so much and I use it all the time. It's just a tad bit small because white clay or like all ceramics shrink when you fire them twice. So that's a whole nother process of like learning to measure and estimate your pieces. Like it has to be bigger. Now I'm going to move on to travel. Do you have a next solo trip planned? Where or when? Nothing set in stone yet, but I absolutely love traveling internationally by myself. So it is for sure going to be like an annual thing. I just don't know that I have the budget for it or the time to be away from home for the rest of the year. But I would really love to go back to Scotland, which kind of ties into the next question. Do you have plans to visit Glasgow again? For sure. I was only there for like 
four or five hours the first time I visited in 2018 and I know that Glasgow has like a big art presence there's an in institution there that I want to visit so for sure I could see that being a solo trip I also want to visit like New Zealand there's a lot of nature and hiking opportunities I also want to visit Paris on my own so I've been there four times but never on my own I really want to meet Shayna the next time I'm there um, and like maybe do a meetup as well. And next question, w would you consider living abroad? I'm sorry if I seem kind of wired. I'm trying to talk quickly because it's a fine balance of making this video in like within an hour to be like digestible, but also trying to fit a lot of content in question wise. So next question, would you consider living abroad? That is a pipe dream of mine. I keep entertaining it saying like I would like to, I would like to, it's kind of like in my bucket list because before I have kids and settle down my family, I want to be able to live somewhere abroad and experience what it's like to just live somewhere differently as an adult, maybe come out of my comfort zone and change because of the people I meet and the society that I am trying to like slightly integrate myself into. So I had thought for a while, I kept saying I would like to try living in Asia and like Taipei. I thought Taiwan was really nice, but it's because I already know Mandarin, so it would be less difficult for me. But after I went to Japan this time, I was like, wow, it wouldn't be the craziest if I try to live abroad in Japan for like a year. Um, Still, there's no plans in the works, there's no timeline, but I would say it has to be within the next like eight to 10 years, which is a really huge window. And I would definitely have to bring my cats with me, so let me show you them. Just don't know how I'm gonna logistically make that happen and what the heck I'm gonna do for like my work or like what kind of art I'm gonna be doing if I can live abroad, so. And maybe I can like study for a year, I just don't know. And then lastly, I had considered like going to France for a year and there's nothing like being able to learn a language when you have to use it every single day. But I just feel nervous because I don't really know like what I would do and how and I'm not seriously entertaining it yet, but I hope that I don't let it slip by me. And I tell myself, hey, I once thought that moving to New York on my own was a big scary thing and now I I did it and now I feel like it's such a normal thing so why should I be scared to do the same thing about like moving abroad for a year, right? Number 14, what is a favorite city that you visited? Um, off the top of my head, an overrated city I guess I would say that I love is Paris. An underrated city that I really love visiting was Toronto. I have two vlogs because I went twice in one year. I had so much fun. And then lastly, I think Tokyo was so fun because the food is just so good. That's probably like the main reason why I really enjoy traveling in Tokyo. Um, or like the city itself, there's a lot of variety and the subway is so efficient. Which is like good food everywhere. You know, 7-Eleven. Get like a skewer that costs, what, 169 yen? And it tastes like something you pay $11 for here in New York. Next category is living slash living in New York City. When did you start feeling at home? Any particular memory and how did it happen? I started feeling at home in New York when I began to have community. So it's like the people in my life, maybe routine and a combination of both. So like people that I always see routinely and that a big part of that is going to martial arts class having a third place so outside of my home where i also work most of the time having a third place where i can go and kind of like be a version of myself like no one really expects anything of me and when we're working together you don't there's not a lot of conversation that happens in the classes so people know very little about me but yet i've seen them around for like two years now and there's a certain kind of comforting familiarity to that and that definitely makes me feel very much at home not to mention when I started really knowing how to navigate the streets without maps, knowing how to take subways without like calculating on Google Maps what's the fastest. That's when I really started feeling like this is my home. A place that I find really comforting or one of my favorite comfort spots is actually riding the Q train across Manhattan Bridge. Every time I go back and forth from Brooklyn and Manhattan, I maybe you can call it like I turn into a tourist for a hot sec but I cherish the view of Brooklyn Bridge and 
the two boroughs. I just like feel like I'm not gonna tire of this site. It's really beautiful and I really try to take in, wow, I live here and I'm grateful for that. And the weather varies, you know, throughout the year. So it's always like a fresh scene because I don't take it all the time. But when I do, I really enjoy the few, was it like 20 seconds? Number 16, honest opinion about living in New York City. My honest opinion is that it is so great to always have things to do you can le learn from new experiences and be able to meet people but it is so expensive like you pay for that opportunity like no doubt so my honest experience is like i am really grateful and i think it has changed me so much um but not without a cost so i hustle it's really cutthroat you know really cutthroat really fast paced but also so wonderful yeah Number 17, thoughts of settling down somewhere permanent. I know eventually I do want to settle down rather than be like nomadic most of my adult life because I really want to open a store of some kind and that really ties me down location wise. And I don't really foresee that being in New York City. I feel like it's going to be in a more like, if anything, like quiet outskirts of a city in like a slower paced environment where maybe I can operate a gift shop, art studio, and cafe. And my mom really wants to go in on it with me so I can foresee like working with my mom um, every day, like having like a big dog and like, having a family like somewhere. So I don't really know. I know that my best friend wants to retire in like San Diego or like around that area. So I'm just like, oh, it'd be really nice to live near them. So maybe I should like settle down somewhere like either in Southern California, but it's really open because it really also depends on who I wound up meeting. Number 18, what is your favorite takeout place? So I don't really take out food too much because I live such a social life that I eat out a lot with friends and then I'm like, okay, gotta save money. So I cook. From home but if i if i do want a night in um where i treat myself to something in downtown brooklyn slash fort green there's a restaurant called bomb with the wind which is this kind of silly uh kind of like gentrified korean restaurant like tapas and even though it's like a really expensive restaurant their bomb noodle is worth it it's called b-o-m noodle like bomb with the wind bomb noodle it is so good. I ate there on my birthday and everybody who tried the bomb noodle really, really enjoyed it. So that would be my tip if you live in Brooklyn. Check out that place. Now, next question. Any insight on being an independent woman, solo living and solo travel? My insight would be that it's really important to be comfortable being in your own company because when you're solo living and traveling, you also have to rely on yourself and there's no expectation that you aren't responsible for everything. And I think that helps you in turn become really confident in your abilities. And my favorite part about living alone, although sometimes it like can feel lonely or it can feel like, like, oh, I'm so frustrated. I locked myself out. And it's because I don't have a roommate and I have to pay $250 or sometimes even more for like a last minute um, locksmith. And that's frustrating, but then at the same time, on the flip side, I can own all of these mistakes and all of these like unfortunate incidents because it's like mine, it's my own. And I really like that. And for solo traveling, I really enjoy interacting with environments alone because that's like your truest version of yourself without really like any masking for your family or friends that's with you or your significant other. You don't have to consider anyone else but yourself in that moment. I just think that you are able to have more interesting thoughts that's not about like what am I going to say next to them? What am I going to do? Or like are they going to be okay with this? I have to ask because I want to do this. I want to stay an extra hour. I want to keep shopping but I have to ask. And it's really nice and not exhausting to be able to just like do whatever you want when you want. And I, I feel like at least you truly get used to being alone. Like when you're traveling, you get really used to it. And it just doesn't feel like lonely to me at least. I can talk more about that in the future. Just like in general, like solo related travel things. If you were to move again, what city would you live in? 
well, I think I, in theory, would be open to like Seattle, seems cool. Um, Chicago seems cool, but very unlikely. Um, and like LA, because I've never tried living in SoCal. I don't really like the idea of being stuck in traffic all the time. Those are the first things that come to mind. And abroad, I think of like Paris, Berlin, London, maybe. Sorry, I just really want to move this. <laughs> okay, how do you stay sane working alone all day? I stay sane by having healthy doses of, okay, my back. I can't do this anymore, I can't keep hunching. I stay sane by having healthy doses of social interaction throughout my day. So obviously like one to two days, not really seeing anyone, it's perfectly fine for me, but it has really helped my mental health to have a ceramic studio, just go in and be around people, to have martial art class two to three times a week. But if I truly like don't go out, then I FaceTime my sister, maybe like every day to every other day. And I see my friends. So I think I'm like especially social compared to people with nine to five jobs because I'm craving that social interaction. Whereas I feel like if you work in a team and you're constantly in meetings all day, then when you're finally off work, you just want that silence and you want to like relax and zone out. Well, I feel like I get a lot of that peace and quiet during my workday. So at the end of the workday, I'm actually craving that simulation from people. So just go out and see people. Like today, right after this, when I get off work, I'm gonna go go on a run with William and then go get dinner with our mutual high school friend. So that's like my daily interaction. It's almost like, you know, when you live at home, you have dinner with your family every day. So because I don't live with anyone and I don't see them for meals every day, I like have a chosen family that I eat with. Now the category of shows, books, and music. Have you seen Euphoria? I have, and my quick thoughts on that would be, it's a really entertaining show and it's done artfully and I think it's really innovative. There's obviously a lot of strange, unrealistic, and problematic qualities to it, but I really liked relating to the narratives of the main characters, um, like grief with her dad passing from cancer, which I directly relate to, as well as her best friend, having trouble remembering her name, her best friend whose father was very absent for most of her life. And the last episode, that's currently like the last episode, when they were having that heart to heart after the high school play, when they were talking about their fathers, I was like, oh my God, it's like two different characters, but talking about relationships with fathers that both apply to me. And I felt very seen. And that's my take on that. Um, next question. Have you been enjoying breasts and eggs? I am. So this is the book I'm currently reading and I'm like two thirds through. It's by Miko Kawakami. Although it's translated from Japanese and I always feel a little bit like, oh, I'm not reading the true original intent. It's also like translated by like two white men, I think. And not, you know, I'm not like really reading the work of the Japanese author um, it's still really really interesting I wish I can talk about it better but before I finish a book it's really hard for me and I don't know how to not do spoilers um, but I would say it's done in first person and I really enjoy how the characters thoughts run off and it really helps me like reflect because it's about like womanhood it's about almost like selfhood in a way and it takes place in Tokyo, so the fact that I went to Tokyo like in the middle of reading this book, um, it was so cool recognizing the station names and like the street names that would be name dropped throughout the novel because I was like, wait, it's almost like watching a TV show or movie that's taking place in Brooklyn because I can recognize everything, you know? So I'm liking it a lot. And the other two books that I'm starting to read or have been reading is Bliss Montage by Ling Ma. My favorite short stories from that collection are Los Angeles, which is the first one, and then G. Um, they're just so eerie and beautiful and well-written. Highly recommend. Ling Ma also wrote Severance, which is her first publication, I believe. The other book I'm starting to read is Clara and the Sun by a Japanese author, and I forget the name, but I'm very, very excited for all of them. I'm very big on fiction, as you can see.
What's your favorite The Office character that's not Jim, Dwight, or Michael? And what are your favorite episodes? So Andy is actually one of my favorite characters, even if I didn't have to. I think Dwight maybe takes a cake, but definitely Andy is one of my favorite characters. He's so funny and I love all the different personas that he has throughout the seasons. And my favorite episode, which I think is a consensus, is Dinner Party. Maybe a different one that I really enjoy is Company Picnic because of the volleyball scenes. Songs that you've been playing on repeat lately. Understand by Keshi. Whole Lot of Money, Bea featuring Nicki Minaj. That's like my pump song. Yours by Conan Gray. And entire albums that I keep playing on repeat. Happier Than Ever by Billie Eilish. Gabriel by Keshi. Cinema by The Medias and Growth by Olivia Dean. Number 27, what's your favorite podcast? So a couple that spring to mind, Baggage Re Reclaim Sessions, How to Build a Happy Life, and Little Talk in Slow French, which helps me retain some of my French, and Coffee Shop Vibes, which is just an ambiance thing. I put it on my projector and it makes me feel like I'm working in a cafe when I'm in my living room. Favorite Taylor Swift songs? Honestly, I don't really have any, but I kind of like the one that she made for the movie with Zayn called I Don't Want to Live Forever. It's quite a catchy melody. Um, Wildest Dreams, probably my favorite one from 1989. And Blank Space, although it's not a song that I'm gonna like be singing to myself in the shower, I thought the music video was so cool and I like the messaging of it especially the time that it came out it was such like a kind of teaser song for taylor like reclaiming her right to be like yeah i'm gonna date whoever i want rather than people like shaming her for having so many different relationships or like situationships i used to be a really big swifty pre-red era just so you know top five characters that resemble you so i just picked something off the top of my head first one is amelie from the french movie i think it's such a classic i love how goofy she is and that she does a lot of strange things on her own so i see myself as her and toff from avatar the last airbender growing up i always thought like i wanted to be her she seems really like badass like a tomboy and invented like metal bending um, that's who i would be in that universe but i probably would actually be a firebender thinking about it um phoebe from friends i think i'm the most like phoebe out of all of them i like that she has an edge to her but is also really nice but also really wacky and comfortable in her wackiness and her her fashion sense i literally would would or kind of do dress like her and then boo from monsters inc I feel like Sully was like my stepdad and the fact that he was like, uh, Kitty has to go now and she was like, okay, bye. It's, it's kind of like our relationship in a nutshell. Yeah. Oh. And Merida from Brave, kind of like how she's spicy. She has this attitude. She does what she wants. Um, sometimes it makes me think of her, but I feel like there's definitely characters out there that's more like me, but I would say Emily seems like my only answer and the other four I just came up with trying to fill the five. Now on to the category of inner work. I'm touching on only a tiny bit of the questions submitted because a lot of my monthly note videos talk about inner work, have talked about grief and breakup and um, like growth just on any kind of like self-reflection level. So definitely check those out if you're interested. But the first question says, how do you deal with grief when talking with others? I would say when people say, if they say, I'm sorry for your loss, say thank you. I've become very comfortable in saying thank you, thank you. And although it seems like that's the only thing they can say and it's an automatic response, maybe that is the only way that they can relate to you and at least they're trying. And the other big tip is to not minimize your own grief and try to pretend like you're fine because you deserve to handle like your stuff without having to scare be scared of burdening other people and also not overstepping your boundaries with other people too. I've become very comfortable in being honest with my feelings, saying when I'm not okay or when I'm sad. And it's not really my problem if other people are just like, whoa, like, are you okay? Or, or thinking that it is some really strange or problematic thing that I'm voicing. 
that I'm uncomfortable or that like, I'm not okay. If anything, I'm trying to destigmatize that. Like all emotions, like your whole range of emotions are valid. So I'm just becoming more comfortable. And if anything, you can live by example and do that. And maybe other people will become more comfortable with like sitting in negative emotions. Like it doesn't always have to be okay. And it's not resolved just because you like pretend like you're fine. So I really recommend you check out my video like pretending to be fine makes me lonely. I think that was like last April. I made April notes that said that. Just all of like last year, I was basically like grieving and healing and a lot of my videos just ended up being those reflective monthly notes. Would you consider yourself confident? I would. I would say I'm the most confident I ever have been in my life. I can elaborate on that in the future when I have more time. But there are still things I want to work on. Yeah. Number 32, where are you in your spirituality journey? So I'm becoming more and more increasingly spiritual. I wouldn't consider myself religious. I would say I'm spiritual. And that's, I feel like I'm not, I don't spend that much time, not as much time as I would like um, with my spirituality. Um, but yeah, that's where I am right now. Do I have any regrets in life? I think one really solid example of regret that I have in life is not like a super dramatic thing, but for future advice, well, for, for like my future self. I don't want to choose a significant other over friends because you never know if you're going to like ever talk to this significant other in the future. And my example was like, I didn't go to my family friend's wedding and like I really wanted to go, but then I had a different wedding that I went to with my ex. And then now, you know, I don't talk to, we're not in each other's life. I'm not in that person's life. Like I barely even knew that wedding I went to. And then I missed out on this, this wedding that was like my best friend's family. And like, I'm just like, mm, it's not a huge regret, but it definitely is. I'm just like, oh, I would have acted differently. So now what I learned from that is I, I never like put my friends second. And it's not that I really ever like did put my friends second so much. I do think I like, put a tremendous amount of time and energy and care to um, my range of relationships but just for, like for specific instances like that for like kind of once in a lifetime events I do want to like remember like friends are forever for the most part um, not always sometimes friendships end or you grow apart how do you deal with self-doubt well I've kind of come to this truth that self-doubt is the biggest enemy. It is like the biggest obstacle that can stand in your way because self-belief is really the key ingredient that you need to achieving anything you want or becoming the person that you want to be. So when I can pinpoint, oh, this is self-doubt, I allow myself to feel those things. I don't shame myself for being self-doubtful and then I relate to it differently. I kind of detach and say, okay, that's not who I am. This doubt is not who I am. It's a fear and I'm not this fear. And I'm going to attempt to do something despite these doubts. And then over time, I think the more you repeat, almost like ignore your doubt, the more you will be confident in not being motivated or not living under the control of your negative self-talk and the doubt be like no I'm gonna do this in spite of it because life is not about like being perfect it's about like doing the things that I really want um, being able to express who I truly am and then the doubt is only really there to diminish you so that's like the the core truth that I hold and that's how I deal with the self-doubt that when it comes up I don't accept it as truth anymore I'm actually running out of time on both my SD card and in real life I really have to go soon, so I'm going to wrap up the questions. Do you regret your hairstyle or do you have any other plans for your hair? I don't regret this. I think it's actually super fun and I love the proportions that I chose. And my next plan is to dye it pink. Maybe I'll do some more crazy colors in the future. But the reason why I chose this fringe, it's kind of like money piece, but bigger. I thought, well, if I really, really want something else in the future, other than dyeing it back to black. I could cut this into bangs and then just let it slowly grow out and then I'll have like all virgin hair again. 
but I don't have any other plans to like cut my hair or anything like that. It has taken me like two years to grow this out, by the way. Um, my hair was really damaged from when I bleached it for like three, four years straight. That was when it was really long, but it got to the point where I couldn't even like really comb through the hair without it being incredibly matted like down here. So that's when I did the big chop in the summer of 2019 from like having hair like this length to hair this length. And I really like that era. If anything, it made me feel more like Emily at that time. Let's do five more questions. So it's 40, even 40. What's an aspiration you'd like to achieve in the next six months? I really want to do a pull up. I don't really work out. Like I don't go to the gym to condition, but I think I'll start. I just really want to do a pull up. <laughs> Est-ce que tu continues de pratiquer ton français? Um, hi, Antea. Um, who asked this question? Pas vraiment, parce que je ne l'utilise pas assez, mais um, de temps en temps, j'étudie. I listen to a podcast. And it helps me retain some vocabulary, but peut-être cette année ou l'année prochaine, je vais commencer le pratique, pratiquer encore. Hmm? Pardon, mon français, ce n'est pas, ce n'est pas um, très bien. Désolé, désolé. Mais merci pour la question. Is it la question? Do you or have you smoked? I have not smoked cigarettes. I do do the falling leaf emoji, occasionally, socially. Um, I tried cigars for the first time with William, as you saw in my recent vlog, and that's it. I, I like, it's very, very rare for me, but I do feel concerned for my health. Like my paternal grandfather smoked, he had lung cancer, passed away very quickly. So I do try to just in general, like keep that to a minimum. Yeah. Last two questions. What is the meaning of your floral arm tattoo? There's not really any meaning other than the fact that I think it looks really beautiful. That's why I have this one as well. And my most meaningful tattoo is my father's initials that my friend Jasmine gave me a couple weeks ago. And my next tattoo that I would like to do is Bambi with fairy wings somewhere on my arms. I also want to find a way to memorialize prairie, but I haven't had the epiphany of like how I want to display prairie in a kind of creative illustration. My last question is, how is skating coming along? It is not, it is not coming along. I fell really badly on my tailbone last year and I almost cried just from the impact. Got really, really scared from that. So since then I've only practiced skating once but I don't live too far from a place that I can potentially practice. It's just about getting back out there after a really bad fall. You know what they say, like pain is temporary, but you also have to be careful of your injuries because like if I, if I do break something, then I can't practice martial arts. So it's a balance of both, of being like brave, um, but I have not forgotten. I literally put my quad skates right by my front door. That's the first thing I see every time I come home. And I like that it looks really scuffed because I have used it, but I will tell you like ever since I uploaded that first video, I have not really advanced on my skill. I still don't really feel confident stopping. I have to like hold on to something. Cause concrete, scary. So that's all. That's my entire Q&A. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to me babble. I feel like in the future, I'm not gonna pick 40 questions because I don't know if it stresses you out to hear me talk this quickly. So let me know about that. Next week, I'm gonna be back with my March notes video. So it's going to be in this format again. I am excited to bring back like studio vlogs and vlogs again. I know I've been doing a lot of this like chitty chat video ever since like coming back from Japan. But thank you so much for continuing to support me. Like my channel is a lot less like uh, popular than it used to be but I stay true to myself. Like I really love the community that has remained and I love the essence of like making videos and capturing my life. So for anybody who cares to hear me out and like wanna know what I'm up to, genuinely, I'm so grateful and appreciative of you. If you ever see me around New York, I wanna give you a huge hug. It's always like my favorite thing to meet viewers because it just makes me 
feel like I'm connected to people through like our souls. Like that's all we're here for, you know? So I'm really happy that I can bring you comfort and enjoyment through like my existence on the internet. And in turn, I hope that you know that your viewership and every comment really brings me motivation um, and like gratitude that I'm like, wow, like someone out there, someone out there is like spending time watching the work that I made. So that's that. I love you and I will see you next Friday. Bye.